look, I'm going to give y'all the real definition of what a snitch actually is, okay? A snitch is somebody who commits a crime. The police lock him up. Then the guy tells on everybody just so he can get a reduced sentence or no sentence at all. That is a snitch. If you are a criminal, in any way and get caught and are facing consequence as a result, whatever it is, life in prison or $200 fine, regardless, and you provide information against another person or group of people, you are a snitch. Black families would start to occupy the St. Thomas Project in 1964. In the 70s, many blacks would fall victim to racism and unfair treatment as the American economy would already be devastated, earthing many hardships throughout the country. The incomes of black people would suffer, families would become impoverished. It was at this point that crime began to take center stage, with that dog food becoming a serious problem in the Thomas. In the 1980s, the St. Thomas would be recorded as one of the most lethal places to live. Residents would place boards over their windows knowing that the chances of a stray bullet striking and breaking the glass was very high. It had gotten to the point where even local law enforcement was reluctant to travel near the St. Thomas. Most would be afraid of putting themselves in danger. In 1991, the Thomas would become even worse. From homicides to jacking, the tent war STP was in a project to get caught slipping in. In 1996, the state would apply for funding to assist with the redevelopment of the Thomas. By 2001, many of the buildings in the Thomas had been brought down as the new project came up. The new complex would be called the River Garden, which was put in place for mixed income families. This is the story of the St. Thomas Project, the infamous snitches. The Thomas, located in the heart of the Tent Ward, will be home to many steppers and hustlers. Eddie Lee, Bub, AKA Show Love Like Bub, and Bumpy Face Chris with the Burgundy Maxima, just to name a few. If you know, you know. You don't have to be from the N.O. to know that the Thomas was notoriously known for that 11-5. Brain Buster, Fuji Power, Just Do It, 911, and Worldwide were some of the branded names given to that duchy being pumped in the Thomas. It is rumored that the Thomas was going so hard at one point that they would shut down the yo who was also pumping that dog food. One charismatic figure known for always being on the set in the Thomas was Ernest Green, aka Servant. Ernest, who was pumping in the Thomas, also had ties to the D. Two other men that were often behind the scene were Lightbread and Tweet. Lightbread could often be found ducking off on Francis Street in the checkerboard of the New Orleans East. If you know, you know. Word on the street was bread and tweet at a major plug in NY. The Thomas was on fire. Them dicks used to have the projects surrounded. There was no way in or no way out without running into them dicks. They were pulling any and everything over going in and out of that Thomas. Christopher Dorsey, aka BG, would even reference the Thomas in his song, It's an Uptown Thing. St. Thomas got that torture, bags is 25, that Fuji power nigga just do it a worldwide. This tale of two coins takes place in the infamous St. Thomas Projects. Living that life and heavy in the streets, best believe the no snitching policy is in full effect. If you standing on business, ain't no picks and chooses. If you don't rock with rats, you don't rock with rats, period. There are rats in every project in every hood of America. If you standing on business, you can't be low key, sneak, back door, letting your uncle make it or your homie out your hood make it. If you mean it to one, you should mean it to all. Me, myself, I'm far removed from the streets. I'm just a hood journalist bringing you content for your entertainment. I digress. Let's get back to these boys out the Thomas. Jaltheus Cooper, Creole pronunciation. Jaltheus, a.k.a. Tweet. Edward Falk, a.k.a. Lightbread. And Ernest Green, a.k.a. Servant, would all agree to cooperate with the government against James Alexander, a.k.a. Coco. This story goes like this. Their troubles will begin when Servant Sloan 4.2 G's of that douchey to an undercover. Library and Tweet will double back and serve 6.9 G's of douchey to an undercover agent and a cooperating witness. Over the course of 18 to 24 months, 
the ATF and the NOPD would conduct an investigation starting in March of 97. The investigation would allegedly uncover 850 grams of 11.5. The investigation would begin when a confidential informant would identify light bread, tweet, servant, and cocoa as individuals distributing large quantities of H in the St. Thomas. In November of 1996, the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office was seized from the mail a package sent from New York addressed to Claude Robinson in Morero, Louisiana. The package would contain approximately 59 bundles of that Ducci. Darrell Fisher, another snitch on the case, would tell them people he was a runner for Servit, making hand-to-hand -hand sales, moving a bundle per day for Servit for at least 10 months. Darrell would also tell them people that Lightbread tweaked Servant and Coco were the big dogs who were pushing all the dog food in the Thomas. Jacqueline Thomas would flip as well, telling them people that she sold Juicy for light bread and tweet for approximately 10 months. She would also tell them people that Servant and Coco were selling for light bread and tweet, going on to say that she moved approximately two bundles per day for at least 10 months. Another snitch on the case would be the New York supplier, Victor Castro. Castro told the ATF that on two separate occasions, light bread and tweet met with him in New York and purchased a total of $20,000 worth of dog food. In an unexpected turn of events, the U.S. Postal Service would seize a package originating a target return address in New York City containing 65 bundles of H. This package was sent to Lionel Greer. Lionel would admit that the dog food was for people out of the Thomas. He would refuse to give any names. The 11.5 was packaged in wax paper with 9.11 or amazing stamped on the peanut sacks. The total amount of H was approximately 32.5 Gs. Warren Woody of NY would be determined to be the main plug. Warren was arrested by the NYPD in late 1997 while in possession of 200 bundles of 11.5, each packaged in wax peanut sacks and stamped 9-11 or amazing. Warren would also possess a bus ticket to New Orleans at the time of his arrest. Warren's girlfriend would tell the NYPD that he planned on meeting Lightbread and Tweet in New Orleans. The amount of H attributed to light bread and tweet from Warren that day was estimated to be 100 grams. The total amount of H would be estimated at 878 grams, just shy of a bird. The government will file a motion for downward departure with respect to light bread, tweet, and service based on their substantial assistance recommending a downward departure of 10% of their respective sentences, aka snitching, working with them people. The district court granted the motion. The courts would sentence Lightbread to 151 months and five years of supervised release. Tweet would be sentenced to 211 months and five years of supervised release. Servant will be sentenced to 136 months and five years of supervised release. Coco will be sentenced to 140 months and four years of supervised release. This was the story of the Thomas snitches. Stay tuned for part two. Real dudes that stood tall in the paint. Out the Thomas.